getting mad here. And it's that time again. New series, Wheels of Fury. And it's been one hell of a ride. And we're just getting started with the new season premiere. Yeah, things just keep on rocking, keep on rolling. And we're only gonna keep going with it. So, stay tuned for more excitement. Because I think, well, we'll talk about it later. Right. Well, so I guess it'll be a surprise. Yeah. Anyways, so Wheels of Fury. Season eight. Yeah. Coming up. I can never take it slow. Got that fire roar. Wheels of fury tear the track. Hear that engine soar. Me back. Shifting gears, push it to the core Kill a Kyle on my tail, feel the tension roar Ain't no rules in this game, every breath I fight Pound the pedal, scream for speed through the endless night Hey, Mean Matt here, this is Killer Kyle And welcome to the season premiere Of Wheels of Fury Eight years and counting yeah. So it's been a wild eight years. Yeah, and I mean, we're just getting started. I figured a way to celebrate to bring back our top ten list or top whatever you want to call it list yeah. of commentators. Yeah. Right. Inside commentators. Yeah. Now, we did a video a while ago of top commentators, but it was just like who we enjoyed as commentators. This is commentator pairings. Yeah. So, it's going to be interesting. Anyways, I know the green screen, oh, it is, it's going to be what it is. Yeah. But we have some creme brulee. From the local cheesecake place. Yeah. Oh my god. Alright. Anyways. Nothing to it but to get to it. Aye. Let's get it on. The ring. Headlocks in this brutal fling. I crave that rough with a pair that I know Matt has on his list as well. These two were the voice of a generation. These two were a great, great commentary team. For the many years they were together, they were hilarious. They were, you know, polar opposites, but in my opinion, that's what gave them such great chemistry. And, you know, like I said, the voice of a generation. And I'm sure many people grew up with these two as the soundtrack of their wrestling, of their childhood growing up, watching Monday Night Raw specifically. Good old JR and Jerry the King Lawler. But I mean,. It's funny because, I mean, you look at Jerry Lawler, you look at Jim Ross, and you go, one who was a commentator in WCW, uh -huh. and one was a professional wrestler in uh -huh. Memphis Territories. Yep. He came over to WWF in 92. Yep. And then later on became a commentator with Vince McMahon. Right. And it seems to me like, yeah, a voice of a generation. Mm -hmm. Whether you have the annoying voice, high pitched Jerry Lawler, Babies! or as a matter of fact, Jim Ross, 
With the weather like a scalded dog. Yeah. Whooping them like a government mule. One thing that is actually interesting to me is that Jerry Lawler was the first one to appear in WWF. Because it was shortly after that that Jim Ross came aboard from WCW. Yeah. Jerry first came into the company in 92. JR wouldn't come into the company until a year later. And 93, WrestleMania 9. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least you were an amazing team together. Yeah. The wrestler of Jerry Lawler. JR had the experience of a commentator, but like, just the back and forth between the two, and like, the comedic timing mm. between the two, and you know, the high pitched, shrill voice of Jerry and puppies, and you know, all this other stuff, and you know, the matter of factual, strict, no, not strict, the matter of factual, methodical pacing of JR was what made them so good. Like, they were. Be essentially polar opposites of each other, but that's what made them so damn good together. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. You have to have two people that are, and we'll get in that in a minute, but two people that are polar opposites of each other. Because if you're the same, and I mean the same way of thinking, then it may or may not work. Yeah. And I really think that's what makes Matt and I work so well that I was doing the, this you know, web series, if you want to call it that. Sometimes we're like-minded, but we're also very different in a lot of ways. Oh, I know. Yeah, for sure. But again, that's what makes a great team. Oops. And I think that, you know, recently Jerry Lawler did retire or they did let him go yeah which i think honestly is a good thing you i know, suppose yeah for his own good and his health and all of that and jim ross is still killing it over in all elite wrestling yep so i mean yeah you know what there will never be another good commentary team like the king and good old jr you know, when they had the announcement of, you know, they are leaving WWE and it's like, okay, he's, you know, been there since 93, he's finally calling in a career, he's going to retire, and then just a few years later, he's in AEW doing commentary. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Just two guys that were <laughs> just what a pairing. Yeah. The ring headlocks in this brutal fling. I crave that rule. This is kind of interesting because I mean it lasted a few years, mm. and it was mostly yeah. I remember when Smoky Mountain came to WWF. And, of course, this commentary team, this guy, not only did commentary with Vince McMahon, but he would do commentary in the late 90s. I don't know if Vince was still on commentary back then either, but anyways, you want to talk about polar opposites, Jim Cornette and Vince McMahon. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Cornette, the... Quintessential heel manager and Vince, the serious commentator, if you will. Yeah. And it, yeah, they worked well together. It was, yeah, like you say, a short lived pairing between the two, but I mean, they were good together. I mean, 
when you look at someone, like, according to that, you go, okay, like him or not, he's one of those guys that knows wrestling. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the in-your-face, like, when you look at him, and then you hear how he talks, it's like, that voice, that energy came out of that person. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, when he comes in the 80s, he has that dweeb personality. Yeah. yeah dweeb look and all of that. When he comes into WWF, he was obviously managing Yokozuna. Yes. As the American spokesperson and all of that. Yeah. But then he represents Smoky Mountain. Right. But they have it on the bodies. Yeah. And, you know, brings all the other ones. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then, of course, the Attitude Era. Yeah. But, I mean, and yeah, unfortunately, Vince is going to be on this list a lot, but... Meh. I think Cornette's always going to be one of those guys that is very controversial, but you can't... Deny the knowledge that he has in the business. Oh, absolutely. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Yeah. So, thank you, fucky, bye. So nice to have my leg. Beside the ring, headlocks in this brutal fling. I created another team that was. Absolutely outstanding together. Absolutely hilarious. You know. Now these two well have a commentator team that one was a wrestler, the other was a manager. But yeah, together they were, you know they had quite a chemistry. They were absolutely hilarious. Pretty much any time you know, they were on screen together, and I, again, I know Matt's got them on his list, but I mean, they, they rightfully earned for these guys, and you know, talk about good old JR and the King, just how fantastic they were as a team. I would say the JR and the King and this next pick are. Easily top five, probably the greatest commentary teams of all time. The late great Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Hell yeah. There is no better team. You talk about J.I. and Jerry Lawler yes. being the voice of the 90s and the 2000s. Oh, Heenan and Monsoon were. The voices of Among the Among the voices of the 80s. Yeah. For sure. And again, it comes down to Bobby Heenan being the guy who managed for a long time. And yeah, he was a wrestler at some point, but yeah, you look at someone like Gorilla Monsoon. And the guy who dominated the 60s and 70s and the professional wrestling world. Hell, had a match with Muhammad Ali. Yes. And Antonio Inoki. Antonio Inoki. I so. believe also had a, or yeah, had a boxing match with Andre. That, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this was a very good team. And you look at their time in primetime wrestling. Oh, yeah. In the studio. And I don't know if it was improv or if they just... No, yeah, most of it was. I mean, I'm sure a lot of it was improv, but that's the chemistry they had together. Oh, I know. And they were so good. So, I, and I mean, that's the thing. And when you have somebody like Gorilla Monsoon, who passed away in 99. Yeah. And then you have Bobby Heenan who was inducted in 2001. And he breaks down saying, I wish Monsoon was here. That's how tight those two were. 
Was it 2001 or 2004 he got inducted? 2004. Yeah. Foul! Yeah. Yeah, Bobby got inducted too. Yeah, I, I was thinking about the gimmick battle. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, would you, yeah, for sure, Bobby would have wished that Monsieur was still alive to see him get inducted. I have no doubt, you know. I believe he already did get inducted, but I mean, like, you can only imagine, like, a girl that hasn't passed away in 99. And, you know, he was, you know, he got inducted into the Hall of Fame. The stories he would have told, I'm sure, would have been epic. I mean, we look at somebody like Bobby Heenan, who would take cheap shots at the wrestlers and yeah. everything else. And you have Gorilla. <laughs> Will you stop? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the infamous firing of Bobby Heenan. And yeah being taken outside in the back and then but yeah you know what say what you will but uh, those two are together again yep and there will never be another team like if you grew up in the 80s that is your childhood voice you yeah if you grew up in the 80s you more than likely grew up listening to Heenan and Gorilla Oh, Call hell, the early 90s. Yeah, calling matches. Much like if you grew up in the, you know, 2000s. Or, no, late 90s, 2000s. You grew up listening to J.R. and the King. Yeah. And I mean, hell, when I started watching professional wrestling, Gorilla and Heenan were definitely the voice that I heard a lot of. Yeah, for sure. Ring. Headlocks in this brutal fling I crave that roar Next one for me is definitely interesting I, mean, I don't know if you saw that meme before It's a pic two pictures of Dave Grohl One when he was young and one when he's in the Foo Fighters And it was like, you know, the guy from Foo Fighters looks like the drummer from Nirvana And when I look at back in the day Watching Doc Hendricks do all the interviews and stuff, and then a few years later, I see Michael Hayes manages the Hardy Boys, and I'm going, "Why are they calling him Michael Hayes? His name is Doc." Oh, it's the same fucking guy. That's how much I knew about other wrestling promotions at the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I knew about the Freebirds, but right, yeah. But yeah, handsome Doc Hendricks. And Vince McMahon. Right, yeah. That was a pretty interesting team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that stands out in my mind is the fact that Michael absolutely hated the Doc Hendricks gimmick. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, he had to cut his hair. He didn't like that too much. Yeah. But again, you know, if you want a job, then that's unfortunately what you had to do. Yeah. I mean, it was the same as Percy Pringle III came in to manage The Undertaker. You know, he had to dye his hair black. He was blonde. Yeah. And, you know, of course, the mustache as well, but yeah. <laughs> and he did it. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember a lot of Doc and Vince on commentary. I, I I mean, it is hard to look back and see matches, but obviously watching the backstage, like, oh, this is who's coming, what city. And, yeah. You know, you have Doc Hendricks, who, like, fucking is with the behind a bunch of merchandise and talking about the next event. Yeah. You know. And then, you know, that lasted from I believe ninety six to ninety nine or ninety eight at least. I think so, yeah. And then he left and then of course we know that he came back as the original Michael Hayes and right. obviously and then managed the Hardy Boys. Yeah. 
And it was like, how stupid was that? But that's how, you know, if you don't know somebody, then, you know, you'll find out later eventually, thanks to the internet or yeah, you know, other yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. My next pick is a commentary team that was, you know, quite good together. They did commentary for a little while. Like, again, it was one of those commentary duels that, you know, didn't really last that long. But, I mean, they were quite good together. And they, you could, fairly memorable. They did commentary, I believe, like, early 90s together, I want to say. Or late 80s, maybe. Somewhere in there. Anyways, uh, Vince McMahon and Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These two were the voice, obviously, of Saturday Night's main event. Yes. You look at Jesse's time in WWF and it just seems like, you know, it's too bad that it didn't last very long. It lasted only a few years, but... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's again, good chemistry. Oh, yeah. I mean, you look at when Jesse did the, what was it, the Celebrity Raw? Like the so the guest host of Raw, uh, right? Yeah, and he had fans dress up in a little bow tie, and they did a battle royal. Yeah, yeah. For the main event, and it was almost like fans going back into that character. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and I think you know, I guess he could have stayed a little longer. I mean, he did appear. In SummerSlam 99? I believe so, yeah. And so... Then he made appearances here and there, obviously. I just mentioned the guest hosting thing. and Right. But, yeah, it was a pretty good announced team at that time. And I mean, I remember, I think they were in Texas. Right. And they came out on horses. <laughs> and cowboy hats. Cowboy yeah, hats, right, yeah. Kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Vincent and Jesse were actually pretty good as a team. So this next team was interesting. And, I mean, again, I don't remember too much at that time. I know that... He was the Jackal in WWF as a manager for Kirkin in the Truth Commission, and then of course Cyrus the Virus in ECW, and then of course you have your teacher. I'm talking of course of Matt Stryker and Don Callis in TNA. Yeah, they were quite an interesting team. I mean, I think that Matt was an excellent talker. Oh, yes. And I think, yeah, you know... Yeah, he was a good wrestler, but when you look at his career, he was mostly a commentator or a manager. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, you got Don Callis, who basically was... Oh, that smarmy piece of shit that you see today. And... <laughs> All the wrestling, so basically, yeah. And you'll look at his career, and yeah, he did commentary in ECW sometimes, and sometimes he would do commentary at WWF. Yeah, but yeah, this team, these two were really good that year, and I, I don't think they lasted very long. No. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, they only lasted maybe a couple years, I think. Yeah, I, I honestly, it might have been 2016, I'll look that up again. Yeah. But, uh, you want to talk about 
to talk about TNA and TNA commentators without mentioning the original duo of Life Today and Don West. Yeah. I mean, shit, those two guys really made that company. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we talk about Gorilla and Bobby and Jim and Jerry. Don West and Mike Today, holy shit. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, you look at the career of Mike and, yeah. he, and WCW. Yes. And it's like, you're going to TNA Wrestling with Don West, who was a radio personality. Yes. And it's like magic. Oh, yeah. And I mean... Good commentators always have that enthusiasm that they need. Yeah. Yeah, like, like today at Don West, when they were doing commentary in TNA from like 2002 to 2011, I think it was, or something like that. Maybe a little later, but like, they were enthusiastic and they made you feel, they made you feel joy, they made you feel sadness, they made you feel empathy, they made you feel, you know, concern, nervousness, ex you know, excitement, whatever. Yeah. They were just so good at it. Like, you want to talk about a commentary team that will be invested in, you know, not only calling the matches but like you know having a good back and forth chemistry with each other and just keep you invested the whole time they're talking you know Mike and Don did that and you know like Matt said Mike today already being the commentary guy having worked in WCW Don West having no prior knowledge of wrestling being the radio guy, but the two of them together, they did so well together. And I'm sure Don learned a ton from Mike about wrestling and how to call matches, what to say, when to say it, how to say it, how to, you know, convey emotion at the right time. And like, you know, Don, I'm sure, would have already had that energy from doing radio, but like, transitioning in that into, like, when you're on the radio, you're only using your voice for uh, conveying an emotion, conveying a thought, a feeling, whatever. And to transition that into an on-screen persona, if you will, and you'll know, still have that energy, that presence, but also, you know, Visually having that, say, how your facial expressions match your vo what your voice is doing, you know, don't do that so well. Well, I know. And, you know, it's unfortunate that we lost on, but, uh, yeah. As they say, there will never be another commentator like Don West. And it's one of those things where it's like, you can say what you want about anybody, but John West, along with Grilla Monsoon and Bobby Heaton, were a voice of a generation. Absolutely. At least a certain generation. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was only fitting that those two ended up in the TNA Hall of Fame. Like, you want to talk about, you know, TNA OGs? They are the OG commentators of that company. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Like, there was nobody before them. It was them. And then, of course, you know, you go into, you know, Don West and Matt Stryker, Taz, and today Hope was in uh, commentary for a little bit. And even, you know, the current commentary team of Matthew Raywald and Hannigan. Tom, Tom Hannigan. Hannigan. 
you know. And, you know, other commentators in between, you know, <laughs> were like, Mike today and Don West were the blueprint for commentary in that company. The ring headlocks in this brutal fling. I crave that it's an interesting duel, and I mean, once again, we talk about a uh, commentator and then ex-wrestler, if you will. Although I don't think he was stopping his wrestling career. But anyways, the voice of SmackDown, I believe, from 2001 to probably 2004. Yeah, something like that. You've got Taz and Michael Cole. Yeah, they were a really good team together. Of course, you know, we got Michael coming in, having been a news reporter previously. Taz, of course, being the wrestler, transitioning to commentary, mm. and, you know, they were quite good together, of course, you know. Michael Cole still doing it today, you know, calling SmackDown or Raw or whatever. I, you know, calling uh, Raw with Pat McAfee. He did call just recently Backlash France with uh, Corey Graves. Taz is still doing it over in AEW with Excalibur and, of course, JR. Yeah. So, yeah, they're both still going. You know, two different companies, but they're both still going. Yeah, they were quite good together. And I mean, you look at someone like Taz, and I will say that his time in TNA as a commentator was the shits. Meh. But you look at someone like Taz, and you think, here's a guy that tries to have the charisma yeah. as Jerry Lawler and even Gorilla Monsoon. Yeah. I mean, he's not a terrible commentator. It's just, I, there's something missing, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. Like, he, it's not like he's terrible. It's just, with Taz, he... I don't know, Taz, even a serious commentator, I guess, or something. It was always interesting to me in 2001. <laughs> I believe is when he started with Michael Cole. Right. And I remember the pre-show for WrestleMania. Yeah. And, I mean, he was about to go out with the old Acolytes. Yeah. And so, I don't know, was it the Acolytes? I think so. Yeah. And it's like, okay, are you a wrestler or are you a commentator? Yeah. Because usually if you're a commentator, then... You're injured or something, but obviously he was still going at that time. Taz and Michael Cole, again, were a voice of that generation. Yeah. Of that year, and I think, yeah, I, it was a good team. I'm not going to say it was a great team. I think Michael Cole has worked with a lot of other credible people, and nothing against Taz. I think Taz is doing much better in AEW. Right, yeah. So, yeah.